It's a Christmas miracle. I knew you were gonna get an Instant Pot for Christmas. Now that you have it, I know that you need more ideas of what to cook in your Instant Pot. It's just our easy Instant Pot pulled pork. Now you can have a one to three pound pork here. I'm gonna add, of course, my garlic salt and then one can of Diet Dr. Pepper. Okay, then we're gonna add Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, about one cup right on top of your pork. All right, we're putting the lid on. We're going to sealing again because we want it to pressurize. Now we're gonna push manual and go up because three pounds, I usually go 50 to 60 minutes. This is a two pound pork, so we're going to 50 minutes. Now I let it release on its own for about eight to 10 minutes. Then I just switch it over so I can get rid of all the rest of the pressure so I can open the lid. Now if you open the lid and your pork isn't cooked all the way, the good thing about the Instant Pot is you can put the lid on and cook it some more. Now I want my pork to shred easily for this shredded pork recipe. Now once it's done shredding, I'm gonna stick it back into my sauce and let it sit there for about 20 to 30 minutes. I mean, if you need it sooner, that's fine, but I like to have it soak up the flavor. Now, you can serve this on buns. I put a little extra barbecue sauce on top, or you can serve it over your favorite salad. The spicy Instant Pot chicken and rice bowls. You're gonna first start with two cups of rice that you have rinsed and drained so the water runs clear, and you'll dump it right into the bottom of your Instant Pot. Add two and a half cups of water right on top of the rice. Now it's time for the seasoning. Now, I just added pepper to taste because I love pepper. Then you're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Next, add one teaspoon of garlic powder, and then that should be it for the seasoning. So I have one can of black beans that I've rinsed and drained, and then add one can of red enchilada sauce. I used a 10 ounce can there. Okay, so now I have two cups of shredded chicken. I like to have mine already cooked and chopped up, so it will make this recipe cook even faster. I just got rotisserie chicken and chopped it all up. Now you're just gonna put the lid on, make sure that it's on sealing, not venting, sealing, and you are ready to cook it. So I like to use my manual button. That's about the only button I use. So I'm pushing manual, and because we just have to cook the rice, we're gonna go down to 10 minutes. All right, when it's all done, I flipped the knob over and did a quick release and then just carefully pull the lid off. Beware, it's still going to be hot and steamy, but everything should be cooked all the way through. I like to add cheese on while it's still hot so it can melt, then add a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of guacamole, and then if you love cilantro, I love to add cilantro to the top. German pancakes. I'm starting with four tablespoons of melted butter and then just whisking them up a little bit. Then I'm going to add one cup of milk. Now make sure you kind of whisk as you do this because you don't want your butter to harden. <laughs> then you're going to add one cup of flour. Then on top of that, you're going to add six eggs. Once your eggs are added, you're going to mix it really, really well. Oh, I forgot one thing. Don't forget, just add a little bit of salt. Now you're gonna mix it really well. Now after I made my post, the Instant Pot must have, so you can find it in that little dot in the corner, I got a lot of requests for making things in these awesome pans that I found. So you can either use a glass pan or these pans. So right now I am just splitting my recipe in half, putting it in one pan, put the other pan on top, then pouring the rest of it into the second pan. Once it's all poured on, I'm just gonna put the lid right on top and then close it up so we're ready to go. So put the handle down first and then pull the handle up. Once you're done with that, go ahead and grab your Instant Pot, put in your pot liner. I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of water and then I'm gonna put my awesome two-tiered pan. It's an Ecovana pan. Then you'll put the lid on, make sure that it's on Sealing, not venting, sealing here. So I just pushed manual and then I went all the way up to 25 minutes because you have to cook those eggs. Once it's done, I did a quick release because I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> and I pulled it right out of my Instant Pot. 
oh, this German pancake looks awesome. Now I just added some fruit on top and a little bit of powdered sugar and of course, maple syrup. You're first gonna take three eggs and whisk them all together. Then add one teaspoon of vanilla. Then add one teaspoon of cinnamon. You can add sugar too, but I think it's okay without it. Then you're gonna add one fourth cup of milk and mix everything all together. Once you're done, go ahead and set it aside and we'll work on the French toast part. Now I have my awesome two-tiered pan, the Ecovana pan, I'll link it below, and I'm gonna spray the bottom with non-stick cooking spray. Next I'm gonna add a half of a French bread loaf. Now I cut it into little squares to make it easier so it will actually fit inside my pan. Then I'm gonna cut up two bananas and stick it on top. Now spread them out a little bit so you can get a banana in each bite. I then added two heaping tablespoons of brown sugar. And then this is my favorite part. You grab a little bit of cream cheese and you're just gonna put a little bit of cream cheese all over the top of your French toast. Now it's kind of hard to get off the spoon, but trust me, it'll be worth it. When you're done adding your cream cheese, it's time to add your egg mixture on top. Now you're just gonna try and spread it out the best you can so you can get all of the bread underneath the bananas. Now I'm just gonna put the lid on top. Now make sure the one with the handle goes first so you can just pull it right up. Now I'm gonna add about one cup of water to my Instant Pot and then I'm gonna stick my double pan right inside. Now you're gonna close your lid, make sure that it's on sealing, not venting. Now I push the manual button and go all the way up to 25 minutes. Now I did a quick release because I am doing a house showing right now, so I'm gonna pull the lid off and pull out my pans. So now I'm going to unlatch it and take the lid off. So now you're gonna take a spoon and just spread your cream cheese all around the best that you can. Then you're just going to take out a piece, and I like to serve it with syrup, powdered sugar, and pecans on top. Instant Pot Oatmeal. So you have one cup of oats, and then I added two and a half cups of water. All right, then I'm just gonna put the lid on, make sure you're on sealing, not venting, and you're gonna push manual and go all the way down to six minutes. Now I let this recipe release on its own for about 10 minutes. So when I pushed venting, there was nothing else to vent. So this is the texture of my oatmeal. I think it is absolutely perfect. So when I had family over, I made about six servings of this and did an oatmeal bar. Instant Pot loaded mac and cheese. Now if you've never made macaroni and cheese in the Instant Pot, it's a game changer. You're gonna add two and a half cups of elbow macaroni just right into the bottom of your Instant Pot. Then we're gonna measure out three cups of chicken broth and then just pour it right on top of the noodles. So we have about fourth a teaspoon of pepper, fourth a teaspoon of seasoned salt, we have half a teaspoon of onion powder, and then one teaspoon of ground mustard. Now I'm just gonna mix this around just a little bit, mix up our seasonings, and just making sure every single noodle is covered with the liquid. We don't want dry, crunchy noodles. Okay, ready to go. All right, so you're gonna make sure your lid is on. If you have a little knob that says sealing or venting, make sure it's on sealing. Then we're gonna go down to pressure cook. So you have pressure cook or a manual button, and we're gonna go four or five minutes I'm gonna do four minutes because that's how long I cook pasta for. So you set it, you can walk away. Okay, when it's all done, you wanna release the pressure. Now I already did that just to make life a little bit easier. So we're gonna go ahead and open our lid. Nice, noodles are all cooked. Just gonna stir them around just a little bit. While the noodles are hot, you're gonna go ahead and add four ounces of cream cheese and one ounce of butter. Now we're just gonna mix this around until it is pretty much melted. Okay, that is pretty melted. So we're gonna go ahead and add a half cup of milk and then three cups of cheddar cheese. Then we're just gonna mix it all in until the cheese is nice and melted. Okay, first of all, I just wanna show you how cheesy <laughs> <laughs> this mac and cheese is. It's so creamy and cheesy, but we need to make it loaded. I have two tablespoons of melted butter here, and I'm gonna add about, I don't know, a half cup or so of panko. So we're just gonna mix this till it's all mixed through, and then add that to the top of the 
the mac and cheese. Then you can go ahead and add some bacon bits. And one of my favorite parts is the green onions or green chives, whatever you wanna use. There you go, loaded mac and cheese. The next recipe is our ground turkey taco chili. All right, first you're gonna push the saute button on your Instant Pot, and you're gonna wait until this is hot. Once it's hot, you're gonna start putting everything in. Now we're gonna throw in our turkey. Ooh, not that, you guys do that too. I always dump it in and that always goes in with it. And then I'm also gonna throw my onion right on top. And you guys know I love a good chopster. This is my favorite. And I'm just gonna break it up and we're gonna cook the turkey until it cooks through. All right, now that the turkey is all done cooking, we're just gonna throw everything in. So we're gonna start with garlic. We have about three cloves of garlic in here. Next, we'll add one packet of our ranch seasoning and then one packet of taco seasoning. Okay, then add your black beans. I rinsed and drained those. Then add in one can of diced tomatoes, one can of corn. Now I rinsed these. You can leave the liquid in there if you want, but it doesn't matter. One four ounce can of your diced chilies four cups of chicken broth. Now I love using these carton containers because I know it's just four cups and I don't have to think about it. I've never done this before, so we're gonna do refried beans, but we wanna do little bits at a time because we don't want it to clog on the bottom of the can. So we're gonna do about a tablespoon or so and just slowly put in your refried beans. We're gonna put in the whole can. Okay, then I'm just gonna stir this just for a second, make sure we get the turkey off the bottom. So we don't want it to burn, right? No one likes the burn notice. Okay, go ahead and put your lid on. Now this Instant Pot has one of those knobs, so we're gonna make sure that it's on ceiling. Then we're gonna come down here. I have a pressure cook button here, or it can say manual. So we're gonna do pressure cook, and then it just cooks for five minutes. All right, so when you're all done, you can go ahead and release the pressure. All right, once all the steam's out, take that off. Whoa, looks good. Oh, those refried beans are like all melted in there, but it, it has that good flavor. All right, and that's literally all you have to do. And you can just scoop it up and add a little cheese on top and you're good to go. It's our Instant Pot Big Mac Sloppy Joes. Now we're gonna make this in our Instant Pot. You can easily do it on the stove top too, but we're gonna push the saute button and wait until this gets hot and then we'll start throwing things in. All right, we are ready for our beef. We're just gonna throw it in and then throw in a half an onion too. We're gonna cook this all up. All right, for the sauce, we're gonna add three fourths cup of mayonnaise. And with this recipe, I mean, we're gonna kind of just I guess on three fourths cup, it doesn't have to be exact. And we're gonna have three tablespoons of our Catalina dressing. Two tablespoons of ketchup. We can go a little over, I like ketchup. Two tablespoons of relish. Now one tablespoon or so of onion, diced onion. And then about one and a half teaspoon of white vinegars. One teaspoon of sugar, a pinch of salt, or about an eighth of a teaspoon. We're just gonna eyeball. Then we're gonna mix this all together. This is the special sauce. All right, so we're gonna add one teaspoon of seasoned salt, a fourth teaspoon of pepper, and then a half tablespoon of the W sauce. And we're just gonna mix in the seasoning. All right, so we're gonna save about half a cup of the special sauce. You can always make more if you need more. That's a little more, but that's okay. And then we're gonna dump the rest into the beef. All right, so now it's time to put everything together. So we're going to add our yummy beef onto the bun. We wanna make it a Big Mac, so we gotta think of, okay, everything that's on a Big Mac, right? Then you have your American cheese. Then you need our shredded lettuce. Then our pickles. And then you need a little bit more of your special sauce, right? That's what makes the Big Mac. Chicken pesto and potatoes. I love the flavor of pesto and the potatoes mixed in together. We are first gonna use the saute button. So once you push the button, you wait for it to get hot and then you add about two tablespoons of olive oil. Next, I'm gonna add three chicken breasts. You can add four chicken breasts. Now, once they are kind of easy to pull off, that's the perfect time to flip them over. It's about three minutes or so on each side. You're gonna add about a cup of chicken broth. I added two cups here because I just used the whole can. Next, you're going to scrub potatoes, cut them right in half. 
Now you don't have to stab the potatoes because they are cut in half, they won't explode. Now it's time to put your lid on, make sure your knob is turned to ceiling, and we're going to set the timer. Now because it's on saute, you want to push cancel to cancel the saute, and then you can push pressure cook or manual, and we're going to 10 minutes. Now I let it release on its own for a few minutes, and then I turn the knob for a quick release. Now go ahead and open the lid when all the pressure is done releasing and your potatoes and chicken should be done perfectly. Now you can stab your potato just to make sure it is all the way cooked through. So I'm going to take my pot out and drain it right now so I can add my two tablespoons of pesto and about a fourth to a half cup of parmesan depending on how much you want to use. So here's the tricky part. You're going to mix very carefully and kind of just put the cheese and the pesto all over the potatoes and the chicken. This will take an extra minute or so, but once you get going, it will become pretty easy. Now I love this meal because you get a main dish, which is your chicken, and then also a side dish next to it, which are the potatoes. And it's one of the simplest, easiest recipes you can make in your Instant Pot. How to cook a whole chicken in your Instant Pot. First, you're gonna put your chicken right inside of the Instant Pot. Now, if you noticed, my chicken is completely frozen. So if you thought, it's gonna be a little bit different time compared to how I'm gonna cook it frozen, but I'll show you both. Next, I'm gonna add one cup of water right on top of my chicken. Now, you can season it with whatever seasonings you want, but I just really want the chicken breast, so I am just cooking it this way. So make sure your knob is on ceiling, and you can push the meat or stew button, but I'm gonna push manual or pressure cook and go all the way up to 50 minutes because it's frozen. If it's not frozen, you can do 25 to 30 minutes. Now when you're done, you can let it release on its own or you can do a quick release. I wanna eat quick, so I just flipped it on over. Once the pressure is out, you can lift your lid up and your chicken should be all the way cooked through. Now my chicken was a three pound chicken. If you're doing a bigger chicken, like a four or five pound chicken, you might wanna go up to 60 minutes to make sure it's all cooked all the way through. So I pulled it out, put it on a plate so I can shred it up. Now if you want your skin to be a little crispier on the outside, you can broil it for a few minutes to make it nice and brown and crispy. Now, now I wanna show you how tender it is. The wings literally fell off in the pot. Okay, I've showed you the basics of your Instant Pot. Now if you really want to deep dive into it, we actually have an Instant Pot course. You can go to instantcookingcourse.com. We have all the instructions, lots of recipes for you. It will make learning your Instant Pot a whole lot easier. And you can continue to learn about your Instant Pot right up there. All right, guys, thanks for cooking with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.